Hey guys, Mike, Kimbell 556 here. And in today's video, we want to review options for single point sling attachment end plates for the AR-15 style rifle. When it comes to receiver end plates for sling attachment, you have those that provide loops like this, or these, or this. And you have those that provide a, a quick detachment socket, like this, so that you can have adapter and it provides a quick attachment point for this adapter. Now, for the receiver end plates that have loops, you can have left sided, right sided, or you can have bilateral loops. You can also have loops like this black water that has a loop in the center. And then you can have a slap style or the ASAP style. This is a Magpul ASAP. Basically, it has a piece of metal that goes from one side to the other of the receiver. Um, these come with rings and then you attach to the ring and you get the ambidextrous function. The QD end plates that have sockets come in aluminum and in steel. One thing I would comment about if you're looking at these, which really are have become my favorite style now, in a QD receiver end plate, most of these are either machined or cast from one piece of metal, but some are not. And I just want to warn you against that. This particular one, for example, I bought these because they were very cheap and I should have known better. These are steel, and you can see that it's begun to rust even before I've been able to put it on a gun. And the real problem with these is the ring for the attachment is pressed into place, and is, this is not machined from one piece of metal, and these rings can come loose. And so be careful. Uh, one caveat I would say is always make sure that if you're buying a QD, receiver end plate, make sure that it's machined or cast from one piece of metal. The other difference in these quick detach receiver end plates is some have rotation limits and some do not. For example, this is a ICW steel machined, very nice piece. And if you attach the swivel to it, it has limits. It will not spin around. So this is a ICW, has rotation limits. The GG and G, for example, if you put the adapter in here, it'll spin. So there are no rotational limits. That's just one other factor. You can decide for yourself whether that's important or not, but that is one factor to look for when you're looking at buying a receiver end plate. So let's talk about the stamped steel receiver end plates first. Um, the pros, these are very inexpensive. They're stamped, they're steel, they're fairly easy to manufacture, and I think that contributes to the lower price. Generally, the looped steel uh, receiver end plates can be found in the range of uh, $15 or so, give or take a few dollars. They're strong. And they don't interfere with the collapsible stock function because they're flat. And so there are some pros to this. As far as the cons go for these, this style, I think both uh, the aesthetics for me and the fact that you have lateral protrusion from the receiver. I don't really like the fact that even if you're not using this, it's always there and, and kind of protruding from the side of the receiver. I have one example. This gun came uh, from the factory with the bilateral ambidextrous loops on the receiver end plate. It is strong, it's cheap, and you uh, it's readily accessible from both sides. It does not interfere with the function of the stock at all. Now when it comes to the uh, slap and the ASAP, Remember, this is a Magpul ASAP. The slap style is basically a piece of pressed steel like this that has an extra portion of steel 
that is then bent posteriorly and provides what this the function of this piece here provides basically a piece of steel that you can reach from either side or the center and attach to okay so that's referred to as the slap style I have had one of those in the past but I, there again I didn't like the ergonomics of it and um, and so I just don't have a gun to show you how that looks on that this is the ASAP from Magpul. This is a very well made piece. Um, it does have um, areas that protrude from both sides of the receiver. This has the ring and the ring does make some noise. I installed this and I really I, I didn't like it that much personally. And so I've just taken this off and haven't used this. Um, but it does provide ambidextrous control. So when you have the slap style and the uh, ASAP style, there are pros and cons. Uh, the slap style is very cheap. It's pressed steel, and so you get uh, ambidextrous function and a very inexpensive product, and it is strong and it doesn't interfere with the stock. Now, the cons, there are some lateral protrusions uh, with the slap style, and there are some lateral protrusions with this ASAP style. Also, the Magpul product is considerably more expensive. These, I think, run about $28. And it has this ring, which ends up being cut off a lot of the times just because when you're not using it, it really does make a lot of jingling noise. Then the third style of loop is the center loop style. This particular end plate is black water. It's made from steel in multiple parts, but I have not had one of these come apart I haven't heard people complaining about these ever coming apart they're very well assembled and you have the single ambidextrous loop in the middle of the receiver posteriorly a second center loop steel receiver end plate is this one this is made by KZ they do not make this particular style anymore I found these years ago. I really liked them and I ordered uh, several of them at the time and then they stopped making them. But I just like the aesthetics of that. It gives you a nice, solid point of attachment. If you're not using it, it doesn't look bad on the gun. Now, the advantages of the center loop receiver end plate is aesthetics. There's no lateral protrusion, and you have an ambidextrous function. Now, there are some downsides. On the downside, these generally are more expensive than the pressed steel plates. They range in you know, the $20 to $25 price range. The stock will not fully collapse. And so, for example, with the KZ, but the stock will not fully collapse. And so it, you can have some interference, and this is dependent on the stock. Some stocks function, some you may have to modify just a little bit. To me, that's not a major ordeal. I don't mind leaving the stock out to the first click, and uh, it doesn't make the gun that much longer, and you have complete access to your receiver end plate attachment point. But that's one downside to these center-looped receiver end plates. The next group we want to talk about are these quick detach socket receiver end plates. These are found in both uh, 6061 aluminum as well as steel. Once again, you need to look for one piece construction. This style has really become my favorite in the past few years. The pros are the aesthetics. There's no lateral protrusion. There's little or no posterior protrusion. There's no interference with stock function. The QD end plates are there when you need them and they're not in the way when you don't. Now one con to the QD end plates is they generally are a little bit more expensive. They're in the price range of $20 to $25. They're more expensive to produce than the stamped steel plates. But they're very ergonomic and they've really become my favorite style. Now I want to talk a little bit about the sling attachment devices just real briefly. We'll look at some of the different types. This is the, the mash hook. It's a U.S. military style device. It's made to easily and quickly hook onto a loop. 
and it's a very secure device. The, the uh, locking hook style, once again, is quick and easy. Not quite as secure as the mash hook. The H and K style is quick and easy to use. And then with the QD plates, you need the Q, QD quick detachment sort of device. And it's just an adapter. You have to mash the button and mash the button to release it. Now we'll talk about these adapters as well. This is the belt loop style adapter. It's made to, uh, to have a sling webbing in it. It's this style. Also have a, a D-ring. This is a very nice style because it gives you nice access to snap to uh, in an ambidextrous fashion and still a quick detach button. And then an angled style. One thing to look for is whether or not the button, the release button is shrouded. Some folks are concerned about the stock when you collapse it. If it hits the release button, it might inadvertently release your sling. Uh, this is an example of a shrouded button. You can see the difference when we compare the two from the side. So if you're concerned about inadvertently releasing the button, you may want to look for a shrouded device. There are other adapters. Um, for example, LWRC has their own end plate. It's machined aluminum. They ship their rifles with this. It has a QD attachment point on both sides of the rear of the receiver rather than one in the center. And then there are even some guns like the uh, SIG 516 comes with a lower receiver that actually has the machined QD attachment point as part of the receiver itself so that you can have your sling attachment point right into your receiver. It's very nice. So there again, something out there. It's a very nice consumer option. But if your receiver doesn't have one of these and you want to adapt your build, then hopefully we're giving you information that you can use to decide what type of product you're going to look for. Now, since the QD socket style and plant is my favorite. I like to spend a little bit more time talking about them and we'll look at some of the differences in what's available out there for consumers. Um, first, there are both aluminum and steel receiver end plates with the socket end plates. The aluminum ones are made out of 6061. Fortis, KZ, and Daniel Defense make aluminum end plates. Now, I have several Fortises that are installed. I can show you that. Uh, the KZ, we'll start with that. This is the KZ style. It's an aluminum end plate, 6061. It's thicker than a lot of the other ones. You can see just the design of it. Here is a KZ installed. You can see it's very ergonomic, very Aesthetically pleasing, nothing protruding on the side. One socket in the middle. Does not interfere with the function of the stock. It's made out of aluminum. It appears to be very durable at 6061 aluminum. Just for comparison, this is a black water. And in this situation, it does block the stock from fully collapsing. It won't lock in that first fully collapsed position. But there again, I don't mind leaving it in that first position. It gives you access to the ring. But this is a black water. 
Now back to the aluminum in the Fortis. This is a Fortis. It's um, very black in color, very smooth. They've kind of radiused the edges and it just looks very nice. It looks very well finished. It's a little thicker than the standard steel end plate, but there again, not much at all. Certainly does not interfere in, in any function of the gun. So that's the Fortis, another one of the aluminum end plates. And then Daniel Defense makes an aluminum end plate, which I do not have one of, but I'm sure it's a very good product. Now the steel end plates come from several manufacturers. The first... Um, QD end plate that I started buying and, and putting on my bilge was made from Noveski. This is the example of a Noveski on a build. Now, you notice the color is kind of gray. It's not black. These are steel, one piece machined, no rotational limit. There are actually some machining marks you can see on the edge of the steel. It looks like where it's been stamped out of of the uh, metal. I'm not sure if these will show up on the video, but you know, whether you like that or dislike that, it looks a little unfinished, but they're very strong, very durable. They are gray in color. You have to keep that in mind whether you mind that or not. And I have a lot of these Noveskis. They've done very well. Um, never had any issues with them at all. Now Magpul, interestingly, they have the ASAP, which has some issues as far as the, the noise and the width of it and protrusion. Um, and so they have uh, come out with their version of the QD. This is the ASAP QD. And it is cast. It is made out of steel, but it appears to be cast It has um, beveled edges, and actually from the side too is beveled a little bit um, inferiorly. Looks like it's very well made and very ergonomic and very aesthetically pleasing as well. Now I would add that uh, Bravo Company, I buy a lot of things from uh, BCM and um, they make very high quality products. I just saw recently that they do have a steel version of the QD receiver and plate for about $17. And so I'm sure that's a very high quality piece. I don't have one of those to show you, but I'm sure that uh, that really is a, a, a pretty good bargain, a pretty good price too. So you can certainly look into that. Um, we have Receiver and plates from GG and G. Um, this is um, grayish in color, steel, one piece, no rotational limits. There's no protrusion at all from the inferior, or the, excuse me, there's no protrusion at all from the posterior face of this plate. You'll see that some do have uh, protruding lips. The Magpul has considerable thickness protruding. So there again, this is just an aesthetic. This looks very much like the Fortis aluminum as far as how it's smoothed and radiused and nothing's protruding out of the back. This is still the Fortis is aluminum, both very good quality products. Then we have uh, the ICW. The ICW is machined, still a little bit thicker, very black in color. It does have the uh, rotational limiters, so if you have your device, your adapter, it will not spin, will not spin around and get tangled up. So if that's a concern, this is uh, certainly something to look into, ICW, um, very nice product. And then recently, um, we bought some of these, this is from Midwest Industries. This is kind of interesting. These are machined out of a solid piece of steel. And these are the only ones that aren't opened all the way through. All of these other adapters are opened all the way through. But the Mid Midwest Industries 
has a contained space to receive the adapter. And so I'm not sure if that makes a difference, um, but that is one difference that I've noticed. This is the only one that's made like that. Um, when you uh, put your adapter in, this does not allow rotation. So this has rotational limits. It is completely sealed off from the hollow portion of the receiver in the rear end of the receiver. Well, I hope we've given you some useful information about the differences between these types of receiver end plates. If you did find the information useful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.